Welcome to another exciting teaching from 26 West Church Kids. We hope you enjoy learning more about our great God and grow and enjoying Him in your everyday lives. Be sure to check out the Parent Weekly at 26westchurch.org slash parents for more information from our teaching today. Here we go. Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Jamie. In just a minute, a couple of my friends, June and Arthur, are going to join me and we're going to talk to you about the Big God story. Before we get started, I want to share a verse with you, and this is your remember verse from John 11, 20, uh, 25 through 26, and it goes like this. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. So um, that's our new verse for this section of the Big God story. And you can find it again in John 11, 25 through 26. Okay, so I want to talk to you about how God is near. And I was thinking about this time I was driving. It was like somewhere between, I think it was in Wyoming. And I don't know exactly like where in it, but my family was on um, Christmas vacation with my brother and his family. And we were headed to the place we were going to be staying. And we got caught in this snowstorm, and the snow was falling so hard and so thick that we couldn't see anything. We couldn't see the road. We couldn't see anything on the sides. Like we'd had no idea where things were. In fact, it got so bad that I was kind of scared. And we ended up pulling the car over and just waiting for it to stop snowing so hard because we couldn't do anything. We we just couldn't see. And um, today we're going to talk about a time um, where God was near in the Bible. But what's cool in that story, I knew God was near to me then too. Um, last week we heard about Jesus and how he had, had fed 5,000 people who had come to listen to him. You guys remember that he had gone away to be alone and they followed him and he had compassion on them and fed them because they were hungry. And after that amazing miracle, Jesus went away to be by himself. Remember, his disciples were there as well. And when Jesus had gone away to be alone, the disciples went and they got onto a boat and they headed out on the water. But soon they found themselves in a really big storm. So before we hear more about that, let's pause and let's pray and ask God to be here with us today, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you are near to us and that you care about us. I pray that you'll help us to understand your words and the meaning behind this story. We just love you and we pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, you guys. So we're going to be reading in Matthew 14. And you guys are invited to follow along. So grab your Bibles. 14, we're starting around chapter 22 if that helps. Okay, so I told you the disciples had gone to their boats and they were in a storm. So, the terrified disciples were in this storm and they had sailed in the storm for several hours. So my disciples are going to come and join me right now. And remember, they're in a big storm, so of course they've got their rain ponchos on and they're ready to go. Okay, you guys. So, they had been in the storm for hours and they were rowing and rowing. They were exhausted because they didn't have any motor boats or anything like that. In fact, they were in a boat like this. So the disciples had to row the boat the whole way and they were so exhausted. They were running out of energy and they kept on going, but the storm was just raging all around them. Good thing they have hoods on. <laughs> okay, and the storm was going and going, and they kept on rowing their boat hours and hours late into the night. Oh, you guys look like you're exhausted, starting to wear out. Suddenly, the disciples saw something that scared them so much. They saw a man walking toward them in the middle of the storm on the water. And what did they say? It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. Ah, they were so ah! scared. <laughs> but don't worry, because they heard a familiar voice say, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. 
and they had that familiar feeling because when they looked closer, they realized that it was Jesus who was in the storm with them. Okay, we're going to continue on 28 and through 30 in the Bible. So, um, Peter saw Jesus and he said to him, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Wow, Peter was a gutsy guy, wasn't he? When Jesus told him to come, he climbed out of the boat. He got out and he took one step closer and then you can head back that way. And then um, he took another step closer and he was walking on water in a storm with Jesus, which is so super cool. But Peter had been looking right at Jesus in his eyes, but he took his eyes off of Jesus and he remembered that he was in a storm and he got scared again. Do you guys remember what happened next when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus? He got really scared and he started to sink because of his doubt. Oh no, and he starts sinking in the water and the water comes up higher. Oh no, and as Peter sank down in the water, he shouted, Lord save me! And you know what happened next? The Bible tells us that right away, Peter, Peter, Peter. <laughs> the Bible says that Jesus reached out and he grabbed Peter by the ham, hand and he saved him from drowning. And then even during Peter's most frightening moment, Jesus was near. He was only one arm length away. And they were in the storm and the water was there. And there were fish, obviously, because we're in the water, right? <laughs> okay. So, but Jesus looked at Peter and he said, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Jesus was near and he wanted Peter to trust him. Okay, they're still in the storm a little bit. Then when Jesus and Peter climbed back into the boat together, you're gonna climb into the boat, the storm mm. stopped immediately and it was gone. Everyone who was watching worshiped Jesus and they said, truly, yes. you, Truly, you are the Son of God. And then the disciples, they might not have fully believed that Jesus was the Messiah before this experience, but after they witnessed his power and saw how great he was, they were able to believe even more. Sometimes when we experience hard times, we expect Jesus to take all of our problems away. And sometimes he does. But sometimes in those hard times, God, he never promised us a problem-free life, did he? He promises that he will be near us even in those hard times and that he will help us. When we have challenges and we struggle, we need to learn to trust that God is near us in the middle of our struggles and then we can grow in our faith. So it is okay to pray and ask God to take our troubles away, but sometimes he does. But sometimes we should also pray and ask God to remind us that he's near, just like he was near to Peter when he was sinking. Sometimes the way that God helps us is by increasing our faith, by reminding us that he is with us. And we can always trust God to know what is best for us. So we can trust him to comfort us too, because he's near. So I have two verses and one more thing that I'd like to say to you. And it is this, Hebrews 12, verse 2, and Psalm 123, verse 1. In Hebrews it says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And then in Psalm 123, it says, I lift my eyes to you, to you who sit enthroned in heaven. And just like when Peter remembered to look at God and when he stayed focused on God, his faith was great and God saved him. So today, before we go, may you know 
that God is near you in hard times and may he give you patience, peace, and joy. And may your faith grow as you fix your eyes on Jesus. And we're so glad that you guys came today and that you joined us for this part of the Big God Story. I'd encourage you to look in your Parent Weekly for the discussion questions and the activities that go with this lesson. And we will see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>